Hi guys, Mr. Molly here from Active Martial Arts. We're going to be talking about the two board breaks that the advanced students are going to be doing this cycle. So advanced level, your board breaks this cycle are an elbow strike and a round kick. Two very nice techniques that I like to break boards with. So let's talk about that first. Um, most of the time when people are having trouble breaking their board, um, I like to say board breaking is 80 or 90 percent mental and you know 10 to 20 percent physical. By the time you get to advanced level, you can throw a round kick, or you should be able to throw a round kick. So most of the time, technique isn't the issue, but we're going to cover all bases, we're going to, we're going to cover the technique. Most of the time, it's just believing in yourself and that you can hit the board hard. Um, another big drawback for, for people with board breaking is uh, they're afraid to get hurt. They're like, oh, if I, if I hit that board, it's, it's, it's going to hurt, you know, I, I might not break it. Well, it's, you know, it will hurt if you don't break it, because you're hitting a board and all the impact and everything doesn't go through the board, it comes right back into your arm or your hand or your foot or whatever it is when you don't break it. So doing these, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and break it, that ends up hurting your hand more uh, than if you just hit through the board. Now, it, there's gonna be a little bit of pain involved. I mean, anything worth anything is gonna take a little bit of pain or a little bit of effort to get through, okay? Um, board breaking is safe and uh, it's, it's, it's not something you have to be scared of, okay? So let, let's talk uh, about technique-wise. So for the elbow strike, um, I'm gonna roll my sleeve back so I can show you. You're not gonna hit with the point of your elbow. You should already know that. You're gonna be hitting with the forearm, okay? You, the, the, the force is generated not from your arm swing. It's generated from everything in connection with your hips, from the, from the feet, from the toes, to the knees, to the thighs, all the way to the hips up to the upper body, and then it finally ends, the, the link in the chain is the, the end is the elbow. So if something's missing in there, you're, you're missing out on everything. Very common mistake with the elbow strike that I see all the time. Here it is. I'm going to demonstrate on my left side so you can see. How can I push, how can I drive if my foot isn't on the ground? It's like staying here on one foot and trying to push into something. You have no drive, you have no force, you have no follow through. You're not going to be able to follow through the board. So here's another example of that same thing. My foot is flat. How can I drive with my foot flat? I can't. I have to be on the ball of my foot. This is a big difference. I can push through the bag now. I'm flat, I can't do that. I've reached the limit of my force. Foot off the ground, I've reached the limit of my force. So when I'm throwing this strike, I need to be driving into the bag and pushing from the ground. There's, it doesn't end when my elbow touches the board. That's another mistake. I'm not having enough follow through. They'll start the technique either too far away, even if they do have follow through. My it's over. The technique is over. I, I should be through the board. The board should have been right here. If I'm going to drive like that, okay. So I want to make sure that I'm close enough to the bag. What's the right distance? You have to play with that. That's I, I can't jump into your body and teach you to distance for a board break. You have to find that out. I like to start where I can touch the board and my arm is pretty bent. That gives me enough indication to know that I'm not too far away and I'm not too close. If I'm like this, I'm too close. Elbow strikes are done in close range, so it's going to feel a little close, a little jammed in, but that's where you need to be. So you can drive through. Now, when you're breaking boards, you can hold your own hand like this. Some people do that, that's fine. Um, I like to do, I like to relate everything I do to fighting. If I'm fighting, I'm, you know, Defending myself when I'm throwing an elbow strike and holding my hand, I'm trained to do that, I'm not protecting my face. So I like to keep my hand up, but if you're, if you're, you know, it's just a board, it's not a person. So it's up to you. You can do this if you feel that gives you a little more power. So generating power on the left side of my body here, I'm going to drive my hips back first. So I'm in a back stance. I'm going to shift from a back stance, do a face in this angle, to a front stance. See the difference? If I don't do that, my hips are the weak link. I'm not using my hips. I'm pushing off the ground, my upper body's spinning, but my hips aren't doing anything. Because to move my hips, I have to open them up. So, I'll give you an example of not using your hips. You look like that. You'll notice that on your child, or if you video yourself doing the elbow strike, your child is probably that. So, I'm going to open my hips up now. See the difference? Big difference when you open your hips up, okay? So, that covers most of the, the common uh, errors with the uh, elbow strike. The other one that's pretty simple is accuracy. If you have a hidden head bag or shield or a target pad or something at home, um, don't just aim for the bag in general. Put, I like to put a piece of tape or find a, a small spot that you can mark on your target pad or bag or whatever you're using to train with and hit that consistently, okay, over and over. 
You don't want to overreach for your elbow, you don't want to underreach. If I'm in my stance, here, I'm in the back stance, I'm going to be up high. When I drop down to do the elbow, I'm going to, my level is going to lower slightly because I'm going to a front stance. Front stance, driving, I'm going to be a little bit lower. So I'll set the board a little lower to where when I'm fully in my stance, it's right at elbow level. It's going to be right here. So if I was practicing right here, and then I go to do it, just that little two to three inch difference will, will make a huge difference in your board break. Okay, so that about covers the elbow strike. Let's talk about the round kick now. So, um, common mistakes with the round kick. This is the one that everybody, oh, my toes hurt. I can't pull my toes back. I can't do that. A lot of I can'ts, okay? Stop saying you can't. You can, I promise you can. Thousands of people can, you can too. So, you're gonna practice, uh, the surface area for hitting with a round kick is gonna be the ball of the foot underneath. Not pulling your toes back, not the top of the foot, anything like that, okay? When I do the round kick, I like to get an angle on the board. Let's say this is the board and it's facing this direction. I'm going to get an angle on the board like this. I don't want to be lined up straight in line with the board and then attempt my round kick. <clears throat> so I get my angle. I have to follow through with my hips. Okay. So to do that, I have to pivot. The number one mistake people make with their round kick is they don't pivot. What I mean by that is this foot, let's, I'm going to switch sides so you can see this. This foot should not be facing the bag when I'm kicking it. It shouldn't be facing right here, it should be facing all the way behind me. So, here's an example of not using my hips in the round kick. If you're standing upright and your shoulders are square, you're hitting the, hitting the board, you're never gonna break it. If I turn this foot a little bit more, yeah, that's better, that's, that's pretty good. But if I turn this foot all the way through, see at the end how I get that whip like that, at the very end of my kick, that's the follow through. That's the driving part, like in the elbow, at the very end when we push off the ground, that's the part we do with the round kick. At the very end when I'm touching the board, we get that extra drive that takes it through the board. So how do we develop that? Here's a drill you can do for that. Put your foot on the bag, or if you have like a parent or a partner or somebody who can help you, they will hold underneath your foot. Just put your foot underneath their arm and hold it like this, loosely. And you're just going to pivot your foot and drive your hips in one motion like this. See how I'm pivoting my foot, hips and shoulders, everything turns into the kick. Driving through. So when I get to that very last stage, that very last part of the round kick when I'm going through, boom, drive through. An example of what it would look like without kicking too hard, it's going to look something like this. I drive at the very end, right through. Okay? So that's one of the things you can do with a round kick.